a lack of support for families whose children returned to care, costing taxpayers £316 million. Pounds. We're going to read into this exclusive from the eye, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an exclusive from iNews with the headline that a lack of support for families whose children's return to care costing taxpayers £316 million. The NSPCC says providing more help for families would enable more children to stay at home and save millions of pounds. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and share us across social media so others are notified of this video. Everyone needs a helping hand from time to time. Um, it's easy for people to say, oh, people should be doing more, people should be tougher. For some, it's too much. For some, they need that helping hand. They just need that, that they need that bit of guidance to help them get to where they're going. And some need it more than others. Some out there don't need it at all, and some are strong enough. But there are obviously those who just need, who need that support. And especially for people's, uh, for, for, for children. And when the families are not there to support them, that's where we need people like the NSPCC to step in and help children as much as they possibly can. And um, not only is this obviously bad, bad for children, bad for families who are not getting the support they need, but it's hurting the taxpayer as well. You know, it's costing us more. When, when we, if we are not doing enough to... Sh to help and support families out there it's going to to hit 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 our pockets at the end of the day so we sh and it we should also try we should also whenever wherever we are whatever communities we're part of we should also try to help out people whenever we possibly can it can make a real difference we were real difference maker before i read into this actually i will share a little something with you so um i remember i was traveling with my partner somewhere and um, I walked past a homeless person, and um, and we kept walking, and I stopped, and I turned around and I looked at him, and I was like, and I was saying to myself, you know what, like, and I had I had I had money in my my wallet, and uh, I gave him a pound coin, and it may not seem like much, but I was just like. You know what? I should, I should, you know, not. And I didn't do it for self-feed. I didn't do it to for like to say, "Yee, look, see, I'm doing my part." No, I did it because, like, you know what? I, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't walk past somebody who's struggling in life. And um, and when I put the pound into his pot, I noticed that uh, his pot was just all full of coppers. He had nothing else. And he couldn't. He his eyes just beamed up when he when he saw me putting the pound coin in there, and um, and he just said he said thank you so much, God bless and and, and all that you know, um, and it may not uh, to, to some people obviously that that one pound coin is a lifesaver for some people who are really struggling to get by, and I'm very fortunate in the situation that I'm in in my life. But there are lots of people who who don't have that fortune, just as the the person that I just spoke about, and that a lot of these um, people out there, you know, are relying on handouts. There's a lot of people in society in the UK, in particular, who are relying on a lot of handouts from food banks, handouts from communities, to help get by, as opposed to the government, who are supposed to be looking after its people, and they're not, and they're letting them down. And they wonder why people have a disdain towards governments and politicians. Yes, of course, there's a lot of language barrier. That's obviously in the last 14 years of austerity and whatnot's been played at hands by the Conservatives. But um, addressing this cost of living crisis, addressing the needs of support for ch for families, for children, for people in the deprived areas in all parts of the UK. This is something that Labour really needs to get on top of and get on top of quick. Um, not just, not for political point scoring, but because that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to be there for all. And they haven't been there for the poorest in society. 
uh, for a long time. And it's time that a government does. Um, because if they don't, well, they're certainly not going to get my vote, that is for sure. So our lack of support for families whose children are forced to go back into care after a failed return home is costing the taxpayer more than £300 million a year. Research shared exclusively with the eyes revealed. The National Society for Prevention for Cruelty for Children, the NSPCC, found that £316 million a year from the public purse has been spent on sending children back into care after a reunion with their family uh, fails. Five times more than it would cost to provide families with necessary support to help uh, to keep the children at home. The NSPCC said it would cost the government £67 million a year, almost £250 million a year less, if it instead diverted funding to provide families in England with a sufficient ongoing support when a child is ready to return home. The latest research carried out by the University of Sussex commissioned by the NSPCC provide, proves the cost effectiveness of appropriate support and the charity says it would result in vastly more successful reunions and fewer children stuck in care systems. Yeah. If, if, if children can be with their families, they should be able to do that and they should have the support that they need. But if they're not getting that, it costs, it costs, it costs taxpayers as well. Plus, it's the mental damage that it does to the child as well. You know, we have to think about the, 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 the well-being and the, the, the damage that it does to the child and the damage that it can do to the family not having that, their child there as well. It costs around £105,000 uh, for each child who returns to care compared to an average of just 7,857 per child when they are provided with the necessary support. Cost variance depending on the children's circumstances, the charity notes, but even when a family is deemed to have high needs requiring at least two years of assistance, it only costs the taxpayer around 15,757. This is even less, 1,644, when a family has a low level of need and is supported across a period of six months. The NSPCC is now calling on the government to invest is spending in providing greater long-term support uh, services so that more children can reunite and stay with their families and when it is considered safe. Evan McKinney, Senior Policy Officer at the NSPCC, said the government must prioritise investment in reunification support as a priority to keep more families together safely, tackle the unsustainability amount of children entering the care system and help alleviate the spiralling cost of children's social care. She added, all children deserve to live with a loving and stable family that cares about them, their safety and well-being. Yep. It can be heartbreaking for a child when they, when they return home fails and they re-enter the care system, especially when the reasons for the breakdown could have been prevented with the right support at the right time. Returning home to a parent or a relative is, is, is already the most common outcome for children in care, accounting for around 27% of those who cease being looked after in 2022-2023. But under the current system, around 12% of those who have returned home will re-enter after three months, according to National Administrative data set from 2022. This grows to 20% after a year and 35% after two years. Wow. That's bad. That's really, really bad. The charity said that if these children are provided with efficient services and support for six months after they return home, the chances of reunification becoming unsustainable and breaking down will be significantly lessened. The NSPCC has also urged the Department of Education to improve its data collection on re-entry into care so it can better identify where reunification has failed and improve, provide improved bespoke support. Professor Lisa Holmes of the University of Sussex, who led the study, said, this research is critical in, the, in demonstrating that providing sufficient and tailored support to children and their families after a period of care is crucial in preventing reunification breakdowns. However, as well as supporting families through the process, this report also underscores the financial benefits of investing in such support, which can significantly reduce the high costs associated with the children's return to care. Alice uh, Woodland, a head of campaigns and public affairs at Action for Children, also highlighted that returning home is the most common way for children to leave care in England, but remains a sadly much overlooked area of children's social care. She said investment in a high quality unification support makes sense for councils as well as for children and their family. To reduce the number of children in care in England, we need to improve both ends of the system. We urge the government to use its upcoming spending review to invest in much better health early help services for families to reduce the risk of children being taken into care in the first place and invest in reunification to improve the number of children successfully returning to and remaining at home. The government has been approached uh, for comment by the I. I hope, I hope they have something in the spending review. 
like I said, I look, I've said this before about the budget. Obviously, we have to wait until see what they're going to come out of the budget at the end of October. Obviously, I know nobody likes waiting to find out what they're going to do, but it is a frustrating thing to say the least. But uh, as of right here, right now, this is a major crisis among many crises that we have here. This is in particular, in particular here in England. But um, now I'm sure it's a lot better in Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. I'm, uh, I probably wouldn't be surprised if it was. But um, yeah, we really need to make sure that we are providing uh, as, 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 as much support as we possibly can. I know everything costs. Ev I know everything costs money, people. I know it does. But the long-term effects of helping uh, children and the families on their feet and helping them. Uh, be reunited will save taxpayers money as it says there and everyone wants to reduce the cost of taxpayer and want that money going out going back into things that we want it to go into um, we can't just sit by and allow people to suffer we can't and we're supposed to be better than that and i really really hope the government does have a plan for this i really do hope so uh, because it is a, an issue it is a crisis and every day that it's not done, uh, one one more child is suffering as a result of this. One more family is, is broken as a result of this. You know, it doesn't help anyone anywhere. But what do you guys think? What do you guys make of the lack of support for families whose children's return to care is costing taxpayers £316 million? Let me know your thoughts and more about this story in the comment section down below. If you found this video interesting, please hit the like button. We greatly appreciate it. Share this across social media so others are notified of this video. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing because it really does help support the channel. If you want to go one step further, financially support me and the work that I do here, you could do so by becoming a YouTube member for as little as 99p or join me on Rumble or Patreon for exclusive content on those platforms. So thank you all so much for watching and I hope to catch you all very, very soon.